when he took out of paradise as Adam salam, then shaitan he implemented a unique trick because all of the other qualities were there he was an alim big alim he knew he had the knowledge and he was aware about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ma'rifah, Allah's nearness, closeness. He had qurb, nearness to Allah for so long. And he was aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala doesn't reject anybody's dua, supplication, subhanallah. So even if the enemy, he make supplication Allah is merciful gracious so beneficent that he listens to the dua of a person and he had this ilm he had this knowledge so he was expelled from Jannah shaitan and he knew that his consequence would be bad and he knew that this punishment was due to his uh, mistake so he utilized the tool of dua was he knew so he presented himself and he presented like a request, a dua in the form of a request to Allah. He knew that Allah Ta'ala won't reject it. And whilst leaving paradise, he did this action. He said that, O oh Lord Allah, that you have sent me out of paradise. What's the first thing he's asking? Now, me also. Allow me to overcome and overpower the children of Adam. Allah Ta'ala said that I have allowed you to, I've given you power. I've given you power against them. But in front of the Anbiya Salam, because they are innocent, that you will not be able to influence them, attack them. But all of the other children of Adam, you've asked, so go, I give you that power that you can try to overcome them, overpower them. Shaitan knew, whatever I ask for now, I will get. Shaitan said, Allah Ta'ala, also a little bit more power if you can please give me ability. Allah Ta'ala stated, is it? That all of the children of Adam, salam, I will also give you assistance, offspring. In other words, along with every child of Adam, I will give you also the resources that can work with you too overcome them. Shaykh said, Allah Ta'ala, can you give me something a little bit more? Allah Ta'ala said that I will make inside their hearts your abode. Ibn Adam, the children of Adam salam, in their hearts will be your place of stay, your abode, where you will stay, abide. And more than this, in their blood you will flow, just like blood flows in the veins. Just like the blood flows, flows through the veins and the arteries in the body, you will have the power that you will also flow through them. Allahu Akbar. He said, Allah Ta'ala, can you give me a bit more, a little bit more? So Allah Ta'ala stated that, that in all of these scenarios and situations and circumstances, you will overcome them, overpower them. The, the earnings, you have the power to, to convert that to haram and awful. You will make them occupied and busy in weird types of sins to this extent that you will make them busy and you will take them away from halal permissible offspring towards unlawful offspring. Yes? 
So the children from unlawful, uh, unlawful cohabitation, they are unlawful. Yes, the children from unlawful cohabitation, the unlawful coming together with the male and female, they are unlawful. Haram earnings, you will go and take people towards haram earnings, you will have that power. You will make them do immodest actions, you have been given this power. And you will present um, different ways and methods and ideologies, wasawis, whisper into the brain, yeah, this is correct, you've got permission to do this, you're allowed to do this. You'll make them um, state false promises and uh, false, uh, they will give people false encouragement and you'll make them uh, submit to idols and lengthy, lengthy promises and, and wrong actions they will commit and all these things you find in people, shaitan has taken that power, the leave, the permission from Allah to grab hold of and overcome, overwhelm the human being. So he's flowing in the blood, the arteries and the wrong actions that human beings doing morning and evening, the sins, the wrong actions, misdeeds, sins. The reason for all of this is this. Because he's been given uh, freedom, free reign. And he has the power, he can try to overwhelm whoever he wants. And further, the biggest thing, that he requested from Allah was that he also will enter into tawbah. He will. He will also try to uh, contaminate the tawbah of a person, delay it. Yes, you can do it soon, soon, from young age to youth to middle age to old age to the grave, and life's gone. So, Hazrat Ali Salam also requested Allah that we are imprisoned, surrounded, he's got total power. Uh, over the children of Adam alayhi salam, full power. So Adam alayhi salam then requested that Ya Rabbul Alameen, O Lord of the universe, of all mankind, that you have given Iblis power over my children, so much power, influence, that there's no way where he will not leave the human beings and he will try in all different ways and forms. So Allah Ta'ala, Please also give me your grace and rahmah and mercy. Also give us some of your mercy, give us an opportunity. So Allah Ta'ala accepted the dua and Allah Ta'ala stated, then listen, that for you, when a child is born, then with that child, the angel, the protecting angel will be assigned, who will protect that child. In other words, every human being Allah Ta'ala assigns and gives the mission to an angel who protects that human being. And Adam uh, said, Allah, can you give a bit more? Because you've given a lot to shaitan. So Allah Ta'ala said that the, the reward of one good deed will be multiplied. They'll do one good deed and every deed Allah Ta'ala said, I'll multiply many times over. SubhanAllah. Then Adam said, Allah, some more if you can please bestow, give to us, grant us. SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala said, I will give you such a resource to your children, to your offspring, such a resource, such a method, that with this resource, this method, via this, none of your children, doesn't matter how much he tries hard, shaitan, to enable you to sin, to commit shirk, to do um, evil actions, but I'll give you such a resource to your offspring, to your children, O Adam, that it will not allow him to go into Jahannam. Subhanallah. Uh, despite shaitan will attack you from all angles with different techniques and methods by such a fantastic resource I'm giving to you, brilliant resource, that no way will you go towards Jahannam. He will not enter into hellfire, the person who uses this resource from your offspring, from your children. Oh Allah Ta'ala, what is that you are giving? Allah stated, that is Tawbah. Tawbah. Whenever, whenever from your children somebody pleads and requests forgiveness from me and does Tawbah, repents, Allah says, I will forgive all his sins. All will be forgiven. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated with regards to this that Allah Ta'ala, I swear by Allah in whose hand is my life, if you gather all your deficiencies, all your defects, 
all of your sins, that the gap between the heavens and the earth is filled with your deficiencies, defects, sins, and you ask from Allah Tawbah, and then Allah will wipe away every single one of them. Clean the slate. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam swore by Allah and stated this. That this is how powerful and brilliant a resource Allah has given to the child, children of Adam alayhi salam. Allah has bestowed this, granted this, gifted this to us. Tawbah. But, 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 remember, in opposition to this tawbah, shaitan has also taken permission, leave, that Allah, that I will try to delay the tawbah, delay the tawbah, be involved in the tawbah, shun the tawbah. And he's got that permission, that reign, to try to influence the, the human beings to delay their tawbah. But Allah Ta'ala has given Ibn Adam such a big power, it doesn't matter how many sins shaitan enables you, influences you to do, how many sins you commit, doesn't matter. Even if the earth to the heavens, the gap, the space is filled with the sins, but, but when the human being comes to me and does tawbah, Allah says, now Allah, Allah Ta'ala states that I will forgive all of his sins. But when this reward is being given, then Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he was given encouragement. And after that he said, I have no fikr with regards to my children. That shaitan will deviate them or attack them, overwhelm them and drag them towards Jahannam. Such a brilliant and powerful resource method Allah Ta'ala has given to us my friends. Toba astaghfar, repentance astaghfar. Why don't we do this? But shaitan has said, I will put you into laziness, ignorance. And that that's why the human being doesn't do toba. Because he's influenced negatively by shaitan. Okay, that's fine. It's correct. The shaitan does attack. He plots and plans and makes us sin. And he destroys, he tries to destroy our good deeds, our good intentions, thoughts, practices. But, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us such a great resource and tool against this, that even if we sin, and if we ask Allah for forgiveness, then we can be saved from, spared from the fire of Jahannam. This matter, never should a person lose hope. Never should a person despair. Never. Never give up. Look, we now think for ourselves that we have such a great tool Tool. Oh, I sin. What can I do? I can't help it. Okay, fine. We sin. But Allah Ta'ala has given us a great weapon, resource, and we implement it. This tool in the hadith it is stated that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has assigned the two protecting angels, the protectors. They go to Allah daily, present the deeds of that person daily to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah's court, that these are the amal of this servant of yours Allah, every human being when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees those amal, those deeds when they're presented to Allah by those angels, the protectors then what does Allah ta'ala say, look here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees those amal from the beginning to the end of those amal when Allah sees a staghfar then Allah Ta'ala states that this, this, no doubt, no doubt, I have forgiven all the sins of this person in his amal. From beginning to the end, there's istighfar present somewhere. And when they present those deeds, and in those deeds, the sins that are within, there are sins that we commit during the day, sins of the eyes, mouth, verbally, hands. Shaitan makes us do these things. Influences us. But if in between the beginning to the end of those deeds for that day, istighfar comes out from the actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he sees those deeds, the spectrum, the range, Allah says there's istighfar in the beginning and in the end. There's istighfar in the beginning and in the end. So forgive the sins that come in between. Allah Akbar. So, one deed if we do that, from this hadith we learn. Massive. It's not difficult. Very simple. Very simple from this hadith we learn. That in the morning when we start the day, we start, start with istighfar. Seek forgiveness. Plead. 
the beginning of the day. When the day, the sun is rising, day is coming out, make it lazim, essential, compulsory upon yourself that my whole day, the deeds of the day in the hadith, I've just, just uh, narrated this to you, shared it with you, that the deeds of the day will be presented to Allah. When the deeds will be presented, then Allah has given us a let off that if in the day we are sinning, mistakes, erring, falling down, not that we're purposely doing it, that's a different issue and subject. No, no, no. You're not sinning on purpose. Oh, I saw I can do what I want. That I can do is far and Allah will forgive all my sins. No, no, no. That's not the concept here. This is not the thought process. No, that's extreme, uh, we could say, uh, disobedience to Allah. If a person does that, flagrantly, blatantly sinning and trying to play games with Allah. No. So, that if we try our best to leave sins, but, but even then, by chance we sin, for example, um, that I won't lift my eyes towards the ghayr mahram, but shaitan's in the blood, in the veins, in the arteries, he tries to control, influence you, his children are attacking you, and they make you do a sin. It's not your niya in the morning, you want to do sin. No, no, let's do zina, then I'll do istighfar in the night, Allah forgive me. No, this is incorrect. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. But if we uh, make a mistake, so this will be a big distance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if a person purposely says, oh, I saw I can sin and I'll do istighfar at the end of the day. Big punishment for such a fool. Big punishment. Yes, but if a person promises that today I will protect myself and try to avoid sins and then and he does istighfar in the morning, obviously if he commits sins, makes mistakes during the day, you have to go to the marketplace at home, there's home, there's children, business, uh, work, thousands of things after doing the day, I have to spend the whole day. So if by chance, uh, not purposely, mistakes are made, and they happen by human being, if something comes out of your mouth verbally, these sins I'm referring to. So when in the morning a person starts the day with istighfar, and if he tries to avoid the sins and leave the sins, and if unconsciously, unaware, not pre-planned, he commits a sin, then make the habit in the evening that before you sleep in the evening, do 100 times istighfar. One tasbih in the morning, astaghfirullah. In the day, in the morning, and one tasbih whilst, before you go to sleep. Then if we do istighfar like this, and when the person goes to sleep, then his deeds are sealed. But it's not in the sleeping mode. You're not going to commit sins then, are you, when you're sleeping? So uh, sleep is like a small death. After that, there's no, no action. So this is a small death. And Allah Ta'ala then uh, gives you the life after that. But a uh, person doesn't sin. He can do wrong deeds and misdeeds. So then a person's uh, book of deeds is closed. And just like I said then in the hadith, that the, the book of deeds are presented by the angels to Allah. Then Allah Ta'ala when he sees that this person started the day with istighfar, repentance, ended the day with istighfar, repentance, then Allah Ta'ala forgives all the sins. So this is a great tool, resource Allah has given to us. Istighfar is a brilliant resource. What a great reward as well for this. And Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's adheem sunnah. Great sunnah, astaghfar. Nabi al-Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated that 70 times over. 70 times over. And in one place he states that 100 times over. In the day I do astaghfar. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innocent, innocent, free from sin. What's he doing astaghfar? From big point. Listen to this carefully. Big point. What's he doing astaghfar for? In one narration where they stated, in the hadith they state the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in front of Allah do tawbah in Allah's presence. Why? Because myself in the day I do istighfar 100 times istighfar. So what is this? This is a great sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated himself that I do 100 times astaghfirullah during the day. Allah's dabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is innocent, the greatest. What sin has he committed? None. So what do we learn here? Is that Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa astaghfar is to elevate the status, the rank, the grade. So what we learn from the Sunnah Sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is that two rewards you get for istighfar. One is this, is that the sins are atoned for. The sins that we committed, they are atoned for. The sins are eliminated, removed, and you get the reward. And the reward you get is that Allah Ta'ala says that your darajat, your rank, your status increases step by step. Look all day long, let's say you didn't sin, you didn't lie, you didn't do fraud, you didn't do anything wrong, but you do istighfar continuously, what will happen? That astaghfar you recite, that will elevate your rank, your status will increase. 
If you don't commit sins, even then a person should do istighfar abundantly. Abundantly. Every istighfar, every call for repentance will elevate the status of the Lord. Just like the Holy Prophet ﷺ, his ﷺ status increased, improved, went up high. He wasn't sinning. No, he wasn't sinning. The Prophet ﷺ was innocent. He's the beloved Nabi of Allah. He didn't sin. But this is the hint, the teaching. Mu'min in every situation, every time he should be doing the istighfar, whether you sin, you do istighfar so the sins are forgiven. And if you don't sin, so that your status increases. Don't just think, oh istighfar, if I sin then I'll do istighfar. Some people think like this, the istighfar is done at that time when I commit a sin. When I do wrong. This is the case, isn't it? This is our mindset. Shaitan, again, he has influenced us to think wrong. We think when I sin, at that time I will do istighfar uh, and I won't otherwise. otherwise. This is wrong. Otherwise, why, what need is there to the istighfar? I haven't committed a sin, so why should I do it? No, totally not. Don't think like this. Do istighfar in abundance, kathira, so your darajat are increasing, increasing, and shaitan runs away, and his power diminishes, his power decreases. And shaitan, he can not do what he wants to do then, if you do istighfar. And the next point, that Allah's reward, that he's given a great reward to the children of Adam, a.s. that Shaitan asked for a powerful tool. What? That such a power he took, he said, I will reside in the heart of the human being. That's my abode. I will reside there. Allah, let me reside there, stay there. And the hadith is stated in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala has given us this learning. And I will flow in the body just like the blood flows in the body. Imagine. Imagine. So Allah has given the solution for this, to crack this that he will inject the wasawis, the, the negative thoughts in your heart. So Allah says, one, if you commit sin, the istighfar will eliminate your sin. He will try his best for you to sin, but you do still a second learning that will eliminate sins totally. In other words, in advance, you will seal your uh, self that shaitan will not dare to influence you. Such a, a tool Allah has given to you that... The house, the, the, the place where shaitan resides, from the heart you do ibadah, from the heart you have love for the Qur'an, from the heart you have love for ibadah, from the heart you have uh, the desire to pray salah, to desire to do ibadah. If he sits in your heart, and then tell me, all of our actions will become a waste. That's why people say, I don't feel like him, I don't enjoy it, I try, but I don't want to do it. What can I do? Because shaitan is sat on the heart. He is flowing, he is swimming, flowing through the arteries, the veins, that's why we complain that I can't pray Salah. I want to pray, but I don't feel like praying. I want to do good, but I don't feel like doing good. I want to pray Salah, but I can't pray Salah. The reason is Shaitan, he has taken permission, leave from Allah, that Allah, I want to reside in the heart of the human being, the qalb, the chest, and I'll flow inside him, in his eyes, his hands, in his blood, in his uh, private parts. Everywhere I will flow. I will influence the human being. They, I will in, make sure I enable this human being go towards Jahannam with his actions. Come on, come on, do this. Come on, do zina like this. Do zina with your hands. Do zina with this organ of your body. Do this wrong. So Allah has given a solution to us, Adam salam, the second reward and gift and method that will break this effort of shaitan. What's that? Dhikrullah. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala by his name, he has given us the targheeb, the ability, permission. وَذْكُرُ kathira la lakum tuflihoon. And no condition here. Open, free, playing field. Just like Allah has given shaitan, freedom. You can flow in their blood and sit on the heart. Try what you want. Because that's where he does everything from. So Allah says, I've given you open playing field, O human being. Do dhikr as much as you want. But no other ibadah has this limit. Unlimited, every ibadah's restriction, salah five times, hajjah once in the life, fasting this many times, everything has a limit. But Allah Ta'ala says with regards to dhikrullah, open playing field, up, no upper limit. Do kathir and kithira. Shaitan will make your heart his home, he will flow in your blood. And Allah said to Ibn Adam, don't worry, in, in opposition to shaitan, what do I give to you? Dhikrullah. And with dhikrullah, when you do dhikr on your heart and recite my name on your heart, you print my name, the nur of my name, it will destroy shaitan. It will destroy his home, shaitan's home from your heart. It will disperse him. It will come, put them together and, and put him away. Your heart, your mind, your body, he will scarper. He will run away from the hadith. People have seen kashf. 
based on this hadith, the friends of Allah have envisioned when they do zikr, they've seen how shaitan is sat on the heart and he scoffers, he runs away. That's why he makes us get angry, divorces are enabled, that's why he gives us methodology to do haram, he makes us do actions of bi'adabi, disrespect, a rudeness when we see that you're acting against deen, against sharia, against the sawwuf. That, for example, a student says, I've got waswas against my shaykh, whispering negative against my, negative thoughts against my shaykh, my teacher. Who's doing this? Shaitan? Shaitan. Shaitan, he is the pillar of sin. He is the fountain of sin. And in opposition to shaitan, he's given us a brilliant method of dhikrullah. Dhikrullah. Remember this. Just like astaghfar, Allah has given it to us to atone for the sins, morning and evening. Same way, dhikrullah also morning and evening. Wasabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. Let's just do my dhikr in the morning and in the evening. Do maraqib. Remember me in your heart morning and in the night. Do my dhikr in your heart before you go to sleep. Final, first action, initial, dhikrullah. And final action, Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, dhikrullah. When you do these two actions, in the morning, in the evening, and in between, you do abundance of astaghfar, you try this protection. Kathira dhikr, if you do that during the day, then you'll get both rewards. Number one, shaitan's house will be destroyed, it will crumble, he'll try and come back, to come back into your heart, you'll do dhikr, you're doing dhikr, he'll run away again. You're doing dhikr again, he'll run away again. Because he'll keep on coming. He'll keep on coming, knocking on the door, just you've done dhikr once, he's run away permanently, he'll come again. He'll run. What's, what's up? Whispering, I do dhikr, but he comes again, I get bad thoughts again, Hazrat, I do this, etc. Allah ta'ala wa la kathira. High quantity. High quantity, Allah says, that time and time again he'll attack. That's the, the job of the enemy. He attacks many times over. He doesn't give up. Once you have a, an, a, a tussle with the enemy, what does the enemy do? He goes, he prepares, he makes a, a plan, tactics, he comes back again, he attacks. Can't we see that? We see that. Yeah? When you see in history, there are clashes and, and fights, and then the person, the two opposite parties, they say, where's the weak point, the, the cracks in the armor, etc. Where should we enter from, etc. Shaitan's the same. Yeah, you're sitting in dhikr now, you'll destroy his home, he'll run away, come out of the heart, but when he sees an opportunity, that when this person is ghafil, lazy, ignorant, I'll go back into his heart, make my abode there again, influence him again, that's why we get deceived. I did dhikr in the morning, that's fine, I don't need to do it again during the day. I did dhikr in the evening, I don't need to do it again. Protection, alhamdulillah, Allah has given the hukum. And Allah gives you that, that power. But Allah says in the day, kathiran kathira. That don't leave it. You have to do it ongoing, continuous. You have to work in the dunya, wander around, go out and do here and there. That's what Allah says. Qalbi dhikr is such a resource. It becomes dhikr kathira. When always your lataif, your lessons, they are being implemented, make it a habit. Maraqaba lengthy silent dhikr. So your heart is focused on Allah, then how will shaitan come in your heart? So the hands are in the occupation of the dunya, heart towards Allah. Working, shop, business, driving, taxi, working, employment. But don't make your heart lazy. As soon as you leave your heart, don't pay attention, shaitan will come back in. So these are the two things. Allah Ta'ala has given a great reward and a resource. So today we are ghafir, lazy from both, and that's why we're destroyed. Today all the root cause of our destruction, haram actions, modest actions, fraud, lying, cheating, quarrels, disputes, all due to this. That these two actions have come out of our lives. Nor do we do istighfar, nor do we have the tawfiq to do istighfar, nor we don't want to do istighfar, and nor do we want to do dhikrullah. The beginning of the day should be with dhikr and astaghfar. And in the evening, in the night, the final action should be tawbah, astaghfar and dhikr. Then the whole day this will continue as well. Astaghfar should stay on the tip of your tongue and in the heart should be the dhikr of Allah. Uh, with astaghfar your grade will increase, rank will increase. With dhikr your, your grade will increase. With astaghfar your sins will be eliminated. And with dhikr Allah, Allah's remembrance, your uh, shaitan's attack into the heart will end. He will scarper, he will run away. May Allah Ta'ala give us all this amal, these two amal that we've discussed. May Allah give us the tawfiq to practice on this. And inshallah we'll see our life, how much beauty will come into life like a new spring. Wa akhru da'wan an ilhamdahi rabbil alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. As-salatu as-salamu ala sayyidu al-musaleen. Shafi'i al-muslameen. Ta'u wa yaseen al-habib al-nameen. 
ربنا حب لنا من أسواجنا وزرياتنا قرة عيجن وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ربي حمى ما كما ربي يعني الصغير اللهم اغفر لنا عمال والدينا واستعزينا والشعيف وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الله يحمل المباد برحمتك يا رحمة الله آمين